biggest thing our players wanted to do tonight was really come out and feel good about making a statement about how they would guard. We had great respect for Oakland offensively without question. And uh, anytime you're bringing in somebody like Travis Bader that shoots the way that he does and is the returning leader in the country, is the leader in the country, gets 11 attempts a game, shoots the percentage that he shoots, plus the fact that Basinger is such a good shooter, uh, our guys really wanted to do a great job defensively, and I thought they did. I thought they did. I thought our defense stayed really good throughout the game. Um, one thing that stands out to me statistic-wise is obviously Evans' 26 points is big, but, but to me personally, uh, as good as that is, the 13 deflections that he got are, are equally as good. We had 56 deflections on a night that the other team didn't play extremely fast and uh, held them to the 32% and the 20% from three, and our guys were really committed uh, to playing great three-point line defense. Sometimes we, we struggled a little bit around the post because we didn't bring double teams to it, but we just were committed to making it really, really hard uh, for, for Bader and Bazinger, and the fact that they got five points in the second half and that, that Travis didn't get a three, I think is, is a game within the game for us tonight because we've got to continue to, to learn how important those things are. And, and, and you've got to have that commitment level to getting things done inside the game, especially when you, when you get up uh, like we did and you just continue to play and continue to have a focus. And young guys, a lot of times, uh, they lose that focus real quick. So that's where the game within the game really becomes important. But, but we rebounded the ball at, at a pretty good rate. We played some guys extended minutes tonight uh, to see where they were at on that. And... Um, Always room for improvement. We were doing such a good job of taking care of the ball, and we got sloppy late, and um, and uh, that's something that we've got to continue to correct. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we played a really good game. I thought Yogi played time and we played time and score with Yogi after he got the second foul, and he came back in and did an excellent job. And in the second half, did a fantastic job. The fact that Will got eight rebounds, Jeremy got ten, Noah got ten. That was really impressive. Uh, Troy. Uh, was fantastic, played really hard uh, the entire game. You know, got more numbers in the first half than the second half, but I thought he played extremely hard uh, the whole game. And then certainly to see the way Evan uh, is playing with confidence and shooting the ball with confidence is, is a big, big step for us. Zach, just uh, what's allowed him to be not just scoring, but I think he's missed four shots in his last two games. What's allowed him to be so efficient shooting the ball? Well, I, I think it's the defense. And I know that sounds trite, but it's true. I mean, he, he, 13 deflections tonight. He's, he's got big assignments defensively. And uh, the, 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 the challenge to the upperclassmen coming out of Syracuse was huge. They, they, we let an opportunity slide by, leadership-wise. I think guys like he and Will have taken that to heart to a degree of really trying to do more. But, I mean, Evan is in the gym more. He's in the gym with Tim Buckley uh, quite a bit. And I made that point the other day. And, and um, um, that, that's really important. And, we, and I've said this before, but when, when, when Evan came, one of our big points to him was that we thought there was a lot more that he could get better at and, and that he could improve in a lot of areas. And he's, he's doing that. And I think he's starting to see that. So hopefully that, can, that, that confidence continues, and it will. If he continues to spend that extra time in the gym, I have no doubt. And it will definitely continue if he continues to, to play defense the way that he is. Terry? Tom, you, you, you talked about Troy, but just how important is confidence to his game at this point? Well, I thought the first, he made his first three, right? Did that first one go in? I, I think that, yes, three, yeah. three. I thought that was, uh, that was important <clears throat> because he, 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 uh, he was struggling with confidence the other night. There's no doubt about that. He's young. He's playing hard, and uh, it'd be so different if he wasn't playing hard. But he was, and it just becomes, we have high expectations for him. You know, he sits in here, and I never compare him, I never compare his game, per se, to Victor's, but we do compare the efficiency stats. We do compare the hustle stats to Victor's. Because basically the position that he's playing. So, learned a long time ago not to compare player to player in this, because they're all different, especially when somebody's done what Victor's done. You don't want to put that on somebody. But there are standards for the position. And I think the more I coach, the more I learn, those are more important than anything else. Can you, can you help guys understand what the standard of that position is? And, and you try to recruit to that, and you'll make exceptions if they bring so many other things to the table. But, but on your team, 
you want to keep pushing that. And for us, it goes a step deeper because of how important the hustle stats are to us and the deflections and the, the post feeds and the shot challenges and the offensive rebound attempts and all those things. It, it's all effort related. So um, it was nice to see Troy get that, you know, get that breakout offensive game like that. And, and again, Will didn't get a lot of points, but obviously, but the eight rebounds and the job he did defensively, that was huge. Those are the things that we need. The offense will come for guys. It's when they're putting... Their, their effort and concentration into so many other areas that, that really make the difference for us. Okay. How, how important was it for you guys not only defend the three-point line well, but also then get back and control the glass as well as you did? Well, I, th those were the two keys to the game. You know, because we felt like if we could rebound, we could run. And any time you have a team that's averaging the amount of threes that they are and the attempts and the makes, especially between the two of them, and they can get themselves back in the game at any point. So there's no relaxing in that game. And they've been in some real fights. I mean, they were in Gonzaga, Cal. I mean, they, they, Ohio U is a really good team, and, and they played very well against them the other night. So they were coming in with confidence. And again, it, it's just there's some high-level guys out there that can make shots. And, and um, uh, we wanted to do a really good job of that. And then the, there's no question that is the head coach of the program, as good as our rebound numbers are, I, I don't think they're close to where they could be. And... and uh, I did some substituting for guys tonight that didn't go. We're not, we're not looking for them to go to the glass most of the time. We're looking for them to be on the boards all of the time. And uh, big, big dose, I mean, we, you lose a dose of that tonight with Devin because he's just grading out as high as anybody when it comes to how he rebounds and when it comes to his deflections. And certainly with the, the, the rebound per minute, I mean, he's doing a fantastic job. So we're missing that. So you're already concerned about that going in. But everybody on the team can rebound the ball better. Some guys really accepted that challenge tonight. How, how essential is it for the efficiency of your offense, especially inside, to have that second perimeter threat that the defense really has to, to lock down? Well, I think it's important, but it's going to have to be more than that. You know, in this league, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you you you, you can't. The, the teams are too good. If they if they don't feel you can make shots, we lived that for three years here. I mean, and, and it's really really hard to find things that work offensively when the other team knows that somebody can't shoot, okay, or is not making shots. But again, I, I've not been too worked up about that because when, when you see guys' numbers rise like we've had in this program, and Victor comes to mind, but Christian Watford is a huge one because he was a 32% shooter as a sophomore and ended up in the mid to high 40s the rest of the way. I mean, those things... You know, it, it's not just the Jordan Hulls and guys like that that can really shoot and that could always shoot. It's the guys that get so much better. So we feel like that's going to happen. But again, we've also had some guys in here that this time of year were shooting great from the field and didn't work as hard. And then all of a sudden those numbers go down. It's a, you, if you want your game to expand, your work ethic's got to expand. Your time in the gym's got to expand. And as long as that's continuing to happen, I feel good about where our offense is, is going to go. And we'll have more and more guys that can make those shots. Justin? Just what worked as well as it did against Vader, and what did you guys come in trying to do? And what we switched a lot. Well? We switched a lot. I mean, it, it was uh, that's that's one of the things that you know, we really recruited this team to be a team like that. You know, they could do a lot of switching. And I used to talk about Rick, the conversations with Denny Crump. I mean, playing against those teams, and and if you have your optimum way to, to play, you have a lot of switchable guys. And, I mean, that's what made Louisville so successful for so many years with Coach Crum. Well, we've been able to, you know, when you're here, you should be able to recruit uh, a lot of versatile guys if that's what you choose to do. But at the same time, you got to force guys that aren't so comfortable with that to get to that point. We didn't want to switch with Noah and Luke as much tonight. Bader got a foul at the end of the half because Noah decided to switch with Will. You know, the, we're still growing in that area. That when you can switch the way our guards and wings and forwards can right now, that, that's, that's a real plus. And it's, and it's got to become a real strength for us because what it does is it lets you determine as they get smarter here because they understand the game better and understand what we're trying to do. Some nights you're switching, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're flowing into a zone, sometimes you're not. We'll, we'll get so much more well-versed. I mean, we're going to get so much better with our defense as time goes on of being able to try to game plan and take things out. And, um, and there's a lot of things for us to add defensively that will bring pressure to the game that we're just really still trying to get our, our true non-negotiables in. That when we switch, we've got to switch with a purpose, not switch passively, but switch aggressively, switch up, not back, switch to take away, not to be comfortable. 
and, and uh, that helped us tonight big time. We're very cognizant of where he was at. Alex? Jeremy had 10 rebounds tonight. I think that tied a team high for us. This was a team high. Just talk a little bit about kind of his play tonight and how important mm -hmm. it is for him to contribute in those We areas. expect a lot out of him. I mean, again, there's a, the, the, the standards of the position. And again, it's not comparing him. Jeremy wants to be really, really good. I mean, th there's not a doubt in my mind that he wants to be a great player. And, and what we're trying to help him get to is to understand the completeness that comes with that. And, um, and I thought he defended well tonight. And I thought that that's where the rebounding came. But again, you know, we got to get him to the foul line. We, we're, we can't have games where he's not getting uh, free throw attempts. He's too good a free throw shooter. And, but, but again, he's putting, he's putting bits and pieces in there of what he's capable of. And, and I'd be shocked if it doesn't come together here fairly soon for him. Yeah, but, it, but, but, it, but the competition level is going to continue to rise, too. We all know that as we get into league play. And that's why his level's got to continue to raise. He's got to handle the ball better. He's got to make better decisions. Uh, he's got to get lower constantly, not just lower when he's fresh, but lower. And that, that's where all those things that we're trying to get accomplished in practice are so, so important. And that keeps, the, you know, keeps us moving the needle, so to speak, of, of why every drill we're doing has a value. It's not just a drill we do to kill time. It's a drill that really has a value. And, and a guy like Jeremy has got to continue to grow in that because he's growing in so many other areas. Zach? Sure. Jumping back to Evan for a second, you talked about this a little bit with Will when he was a sixth man. Do you feel like there's some advantage for him, especially being a veteran player, coming off the bench, as, again, as efficient as he's been the last couple nights? I mean, does he push at all to think about I don't think about that. Run? No, I don't. I don't. I'm not, I mean, it really hasn't anything I've really factored in. I mean, um, I changed the starting lineup two weeks ago at walkthrough, you know, with, with putting Jeff Howard in. I, I don't. That really doesn't impact my thinking a lot. I, I think this team matchups do. Um, it's so much about, you know, quality of play. It, you know, I, I would look, I look at the plus minus and the deflections uh, a lot closer than I look at the minutes play. Because again, it just becomes so much about efficiency. Well, it's kind of the same thing with the starters. And I know that's a, it's always a good topic, but it's not one that I really think a lot about. I don't put a lot of time into that. I, I put a lot into combinations maybe, you know, what, what combinations look like. Now that we have 10 games under our belt, it'll really be able to really dive into that, especially next week, you know, after the Notre Dame game. But I wouldn't say that anybody's locked into a position. I wouldn't say I wouldn't change it Saturday. wouldn't change, say that I would. I think it just becomes feel and, and, and how we're practicing. Anything else? Where do you feel your team is at a third of the way through the season? I don't think like that. I never really have. I, I don't. I don't dissect it like that. Um, I'm looking at every area. Uh, we're looking at every area, I should say. I think I got a really good coaching staff. I'll tell you that. And I think we got a bunch of hungry players that really want to get better. So I like where that's at. And another great job tonight by Steve McLean. His preparation was fantastic. I mean, we had that team cold, and and we didn't practice Sunday. So usually, what you do is is you want it. You'd like to have two-day preparation, and it was geared that way, but I felt like we needed a little time off, and they were doing double sessions academically because this is such a big week uh, for them academically. we got so many guys that are going through exams for the first time. I'm cognizant of that. But we just look at every area, and I really watch, try to watch the films in the sense of what's our ball screen offense and defense look like, high side corner, what's our timeout situations look like, what's our rebounding look like. And I try to stay as, as focused, we try to stay as focused on the details of what will make them better. Like, Noah Vonley can rebound a lot better than 10 rebounds a game. And I'm not, that's not coach speak, it's realistic. I mean, he's, he's that talent. So it's our job to keep trying to push him to that point because he's getting, people are very, very locked in to not letting him rebound. Well. You know, he's going to – rebound is going to be a big part of his life for a lot of years, you know, long after here. And the, the better that he can get at that, you know, the better he's going to get at everything else. So I look more at that than I'd look at any one place where we're at. Like, I think our, these guys think I'm crazy when I'm talking about we can get so much better rebounding with our rebound numbers the way they are, but we did tonight. And we're going to need two on Saturday. We're going to need every one of those rebounds and more on Saturday to beat, you know, one of the more experienced teams in the country like Notre Dame. Last question, Justin. Just how much is ball movement doing for you guys as far as getting open looks on the perimeter of the last two games? It seems like obviously got a lot of clean looks, nine threes. How much is that kind of changing things? Just well, what we've got to do, we've got to, we've, that, they've got to see that that's a strength for us. 
that, that that does travel too. Whether the shot goes in or not doesn't always travel with you. But the ball moving and not being concerned about defenses. And, and young guys a lot of times get too concerned about, well, what are they in? And, 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 and we didn't even run that many plays tonight. Sometimes we did on a dead ball. But, but um, it's really, really important because the more that it's moving uh, in the full court and getting advanced and getting thrown ahead, this, it seems like the better it is when we're in the half court. But that's all, that's all what you're seeing as products of them learning spacing and, and learning more about that. And, um, and there was adjustments inside of the game. You know, we thought pick and roll would be hard with Petros tonight, and all of a sudden we found that, you know, we could get some randoms, and, and, and we worked into that. We were getting more random pick and rolls with him because he likes to sink and fill. We said it's a lot like Roy Hibbert. He likes to sink and fill and try to plug the gap rather than come all the way up. Well, when we got him in randoms, it really helped us. So, you know, the guys are figuring the game out as it's going along, and that, that's really important too. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Players,